Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today I have the beautiful, the adorable, <laughs> like dimple tastic. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> with Eliza. Oh, Holly, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so excited to talk to you and tell you all the things you want to know and all the things you don't want to know too, because it's a lot. So it's going to be all of it. <laughs> tell you girl that is perfect that's what you want for a podcast uh, you don't want people on who don't talk then it's not a very interesting episode and then i end up talking all the time and people don't want to hear from me <laughs> that's not true that's not true if you read my youtube comments it's kind of true um <laughs> but uh god when was the last time i saw you when we shot that wicked pictures movie right oh my gosh yeah that was it that was like feels like a year ago now i really couldn't even tell you when that was <laughs> yeah so we shot a movie for wicked pictures called best friends better lovers with eliza and cody Steele. and don't forget, don't forget eva <laughs> she was oh, oh no, no, no no i yeah i was gonna go there yeah eva played eva played the polish landlady which was Oh my God. So funny. I literally like almost couldn't direct that scene because I couldn't stop laughing. That was so awesome. I love Emma so much. She's so, so nice. And like you're, you guys are both really lucky to have each other because you feel like you guys are a super good team together. <laughs> we, we are. It's really weird. It's like, we've actually become like, I am still her boss, but like we have become like good friends. Like she means a lot to me. Um, I actually had this really horrible dream this morning, I dreamt my husband left me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, eight and a half months pregnant. And wow. you know when you have like those horrible dreams and you wake up from them and it takes you a while to shake it off? Yeah, you're like, don't talk to me. Like you're like, you're like I feel like they really did what they did in the dream. Yeah, yeah. So and I we had a Zoom meeting this morning just about work stuff. And um I told her about the dream. And I and another part of the dream was that like, you know, he told me that he didn't want to be with me anymore and I stormed out of my house. And I was going to go stay with a friend's house. And I realized like, I didn't really have any friends to stay with. Uh -huh. So that was like this other part of the dream. It was like, I have no friends. Um, and then I talked to her this morning. She's like, oh, it's okay. She's like, you could have come and stayed with me and <laughs> we, could, we could keep the baby in my closet. And I was like, <laughs> Work. Or in like the dresser drawer or something like that's the crib. <laughs> we'll make space. Oh my god. So yeah, no, she's she's great. We're we're, we're super compatible, um, and I feel really lucky to have her because it's really hard to find people who, um, you know, are really great. Like workers are really smart. Like can teach themselves stuff. She can do a lot of different things. Um, and also like who care about you, you know, generally care about you and care about the company and care about your brand. So Ooh. I feel very lucky. Absolutely. So thanks, Eva. You'll never hear this. So Shout don't get, don't get any ideas. Shout out to Eva, just in case you do hear this. I love you. <laughs> so how have you been? Have you, have you been starting to go back to work now that we're finally yeah. like sort of shooting again? Yeah, actually, I got really lucky. Um, Vixen and all them gave me like a 60 day contract right when things started work going back to work. And um, I was able to do four scenes a month for them. And I was really happy with that. Like it was it worked out really well because um, of course, Mark worked out like a really good deal for me. So I was like really thankful because I know people were like having a tough time finding work because, you know, people are kind of unsure about whether or not they should be shooting right now or like it's such a hassle because you have to get like the COVID test the day before and stuff. So it's like a lot of effort that goes into it. So I was very thankful. I'm, I got to shoot some really cool things that I'm really excited that are going to come out soon. And um, now I'm starting to book for other companies as well at, towards the end of this month. So that's really exciting. But um, yeah, I did some anal stuff, which is nice because I don't really do that too often. So it's new for me. <laughs> How many anal scenes have you done? Um, I've done... Three, three anal scenes, and my fourth one is going to be um, next week or something like that, like sometime next week, I think. And um, I, I like anal in my personal life, like with some, with like the right dick. But I feel like on camera, like there's so much more pressure. Like I don't know how to describe. It. Like I've never been nervous to have regular sex on camera, but with anal, it's so much more like, oh, like there's so much preparation that goes into it, you know. And it's like I don't know, like it 
it's a lot um, more scary. So it's like I've I've been trying to just be able to relax and enjoy and remind myself like you like this, like this is fun, like this isn't scary. So don't be so like nervous going into it. So it kind are of you, are you nervous because you're afraid that there might be like a little bit of a mess? Yes, I'm afraid there's gonna be a mess. I'm afraid like what if sometimes it's like the dick might be too big and it might hurt or something. Like I heard one time someone said something to me like when you're in anal with when you do anal with a porn dick, it's like a plunger going in there and just like pulling everything out. And I was like, that scared me so bad. I was like, oh my god, like because like, with regular dicks in normal life, they're not that big, you know, so they're not like digging inside of you that crazy so um yeah it, it kind of scared me a little bit when that person told me that and I was like okay I better be careful but yeah like I would I go through like a really strenuous prep process to make sure that everything's uh good down there <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your process because not everybody knows that like porn stars have their own very specific way of preparing for an anal scene you know, I'm still trying to find out the best way that works for me because I've heard a lot of different things from people like, oh, don't eat the night before. And then some people say, like, you can eat, like, just don't, like, eat anything crazy or, like, stuff like that. So um, I have personally found that the best thing is when you're able to use the bathroom right in the morning before the scene because then that way you, like, clean everything out before, like, you then you don't have to worry about anything else coming out later. And then still, like, obviously um, enema and stuff like that. Um with the water in it, not with the enema solution. Cause I heard some people didn't know that as well. Like you have to take out the water. Otherwise it's like, uh, it's the opposite of what she wants to happen. This is going to happen. Like it's going to be even more messy. So it's like, um, wait, wait, hold on. Explain that. Cause I actually didn't know that. I know that a lot of times with douche girls take the water out. I mean, yeah, the solution out just because like they do it so often that it throws their pH balance off. Mm -hmm. But with enemas, I wasn't aware that you would switch the solution for water yeah i definitely do water instead because i it was my understanding maybe i'm wrong but it's my understanding that if you use the solution it makes you like shit a bunch like it makes it like it like stimulates your yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense so i was like um yeah i don't want that to happen <laughs> i've heard some horror stories dude i've heard some crazy things from people so i'm just like i think that also scares me so much too being in the industry you hear so many stories on set of like oh this happened to this girl and i'm like i don't want to be that girl that people are telling the story about like <laughs> everybody yeah every producer I know including myself has some kind of like shit story yeah yeah um, but I mean to be honest like we all you know we've been doing this for a long time we understand that we're putting the human body through a lot yeah. during these scenes and it's not something that really I never get phased by it I never like have been like oh my god that's so disgusting that girl like can't control her poop <laughs> you know what I mean like I mean come on like we're asking you guys to do some pretty crazy shit no pun intended um so you know it's it's understandable that sometimes like it doesn't go exactly perfectly and it's kind of like and I feel like a lot of the male porn stars feel the same too like they've all been pooped on a little bit at some point and they're just like you know you just wipe it up and you just keep going and it's yeah so exactly it's like at this point if you're like a squeamish type of person you probably shouldn't be in this industry because there's a lot of things that happen that that aren't for the faint of heart when it comes to that kind of stuff i know and sometimes we'll shoot a girl and she'll be like yeah i'm like super and they'll say like oh, i'm squeamish about body fluids or like i'm a hypochondriac i'm like what are you doing no not it's like you can't be scared of spit you can't be scared of cum you can't be scared of blood you can't be scared of like any of it none of it <laughs> yeah even like all of it you have to be okay with everything <laughs> especially like cum. you cannot be a cum dodger no 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 i had i had i have a great cum dodging story actually just let me just a little aside real quick um i was shooting it was a long, long time ago when I still worked for my mom uh -huh. and uh, we were shooting this girl who I think was new and I, we never shot her again. And I think it was one of the situations where like she was new to boy girl or was her first boy girl or, and she just did, didn't really want to be there. You know what I mean? She's yeah. just one of those people that shouldn't be in the porn industry. For sure. And, you know, so we talked about what where I always talk about where the cum's going to go before mm -hmm. the scene starts, you know, like, are you okay with a facial? Like, are, you know, like, cause some people aren't, you know, and yeah. we're, we're, mm -hmm. let's talk about where the cum's going. It's very important Absolutely. to discuss where the cum's going to go. <laughs> 
And uh, she agreed to a facial. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think rather reluctantly, probably. And so the guy goes and he starts, and this is in video, right? So I can't cut it out. Because uh-huh. the one thing you cannot ruin is the cum shot, because you can't no. do that again. No, no. <laughs> and the guy starts coming on her face, and she immediately starts going, ew, ew, oh my God, it smells like oatmeal. Oh my God, ew, ew. First of all, oatmeal's not even bad. It could smell a lot worse than that. <laughs> I thought too. I was like, oatmeal's, oatmeal's like a nice, healthy breakfast. I'm happy if it smells like oatmeal. Sometimes that just smells like battery acid. Like, what the hell? Like, oatmeal is one of the better ones I've heard. <laughs> and I was just like, I, I, we, we can't use that footage now. Like, what? You know what I mean? It was just, oh my God. I was like, okay. This is just, and that's just one of those days, like, when you end up, you know, you're like, oh, fuck, this girl should not be in porn. And like, I should have never booked the scene. And like, yeah this is not fun for anybody <laughs> dude i mean like i feel like a lot of people go into this industry thinking it's one thing and then they realize like it's something else or they maybe they they're like looking for a way to escape their lives or something and then they like i don't know i don't understand like how to me it's like how could you do this job unless you really loved it like i couldn't understand like the thought process of being like i want to do porn but i hate sex and I hate cum like what the fuck like why would you there's, it just doesn't make sense to me like you have to enjoy what you do otherwise there's so many other things you could be doing instead and it's like yeah. and this is something where it's like it's so personal it's like with your body so it's like it's a physical thing with your body not that all jobs aren't physical body situations but I mean like it's a little different because it's like a sensual thing so it's like you should really be comfortable with what you're doing because it's like otherwise it's really going to take a big toll on you later on if you're not yeah i mean i that's an incredibly astute uh observation and you're absolutely right and unfortunately i wish everybody had that point of view um but i think you know people just make bad decisions in general all the time um not everybody grew up with wonderful coping skills Mm -hmm. and i think that you know for some people porn just seems like an easy way to make money and maybe get out of a bad situation or they see you know this glamorous lifestyle that they think these other people are leading and they think that that works for them but you're right i mean there's so many things that one needs to consider before they get into porn, which is really why you're a Spiegler girl, because, you know, he only takes on girls that he knows are, are really set for the job. Yeah. Um, For the most part. I mean, you can never, you can never always know, but so that actually leads me to a question. What is the, you know, you're, you're not new, new. How long have you been in the industry? Oh man, I've been in a little over two years. I started in like March of I don't even know anymore, but it was like two marches ago or something like that. So it's been a little over two years. It's like two Which years. is kind of new in the industry. I mean, you work so much and you're so professional. I've, I think, you know, you feel like a seasoned veteran, but <laughs> just time wise, but what are some, what is like the one thing that you thought about the industry before you got into it that you found out to be like, absolutely not true? Oh, that's a good question. I'll have to think about that one. Um, Well, I guess that maybe everyone is like, oh, I I know. Well, I guess I know there's a lot of predisposed like things that people think like, oh, everyone in porn has like issues or everyone has problems. And like they're like chose this because they had to, because I know my family personally was like, why did you do this? Like, was this like they thought it was like my last option or something? You know what I mean? And I was like, no, like I, I feel like that's what a lot of people think, not myself, but just in general, a lot of people. So like I realized coming into this, that's not true. Like a lot of people do this job because they love it, not because they got put in a hard situation and they were forced to do it or like because, um, you know, they feel like it's their only way to get fulfillment or something like, no, it's because they really just in, genuinely enjoy pleasing people and pleasing themselves at the same time. So it's like, I don't know, like it, that's, I feel like that's a big thing. Like not all of us have issues or all of us are like crazy people that, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like a lot of people have met me and then they're like, you're not what I expected you to be like. I've heard of that so many times in my life. And I'm just like, well, what did you expect? I'm like, what did you already like? What could you have possibly thought about me? Like from my job? Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, my cat's making me guess. Oh, believe me, I'm, I'm watching your cat. You <laughs> made me laugh the minute he came on screen. <laughs> it's like, don't mind me. I'm just making my bed over here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, 
but yeah so it's just like I feel like uh, that's one of the big things like there's a lot of just genuinely good normal people here that are just here to have a good time and not uh you know put their problems out there into the world. But I mean, at the, on the same coin, there are people who, you know, do do this for the wrong reasons and do have um, issues or whatever. But I mean, that's anywhere in life, you know? So. Yeah, yeah exactly. I think you're absolutely right. There's definitely people in this industry that shouldn't be in it, but there's also a lot of people in this industry that this is like the perfect job for them. Absolutely. You know, and that's kind of part of the reason I wanted to start this podcast. Cause I wanted to like show the world that like there are, you know, porn is full of all kinds of different people. And there's a lot of wonderful people in this industry who have found empowerment through doing porn and financial stability and, and, you know, a whole community that aligns with how they feel about sex in the world. And it, it's, it's kind of like a little family, you know, and it's, absolutely it's, it can be really nice. So, but you're right. There are people also too, who, you know, it doesn't, it just doesn't make sense for. And I personally wish that for those people, they didn't have to deal with the stigma that they face, you know, trying to get out of it because that, that that's what really breaks my heart is when people yeah. come in. Cause it's like one thing, if you come into, you start doing some kind of job and you like realize this is not for me. Like, I don't know, you become a fucking accountant. You're like, yeah, this yeah. is bullshit. You know, yeah, like yeah. I hate, job. This is not for me. This sucks. Like I hate my boss. I hate the hours, whatever. And so you leave accounting and then you go become an insurance salesperson and that works for you, whatever. The thing is the people at the insurance sales person, insurance sales (laughs) company isn't going to not hire you because you're an accountant once. Right. But if you work in porn, that stigma can follow you. And a lot of times when girls try to get out of the industry and do something else with their life, they get blacklisted because of, because of their porn background. Without a doubt. Uh, I feel really sad about that because it's like, um, I even like before this, I wanted to be a teacher. And so like, so did I. <laughs> really, that's so funny. Um, I, I thought like, cause I really love kids. And like, I feel like if I have to spend the day with somebody all day, I would rather it be like little fun, little kids, you know, like not like adults who are like freaking being mean to tell me what to do and stuff. But I mean like that, that's not all jobs, but some jobs it's like that. And so like, um, I, I feel that though, because I know, like I've seen on the news and stuff, like people who are teachers or educators and they ended up getting outed on like their past for having like some kind of uh, porn industry past or either like they have an OnlyFans or something and then they get fired from their job because of that. And I'm just like, well, I mean, hopefully our future is changing. Like people are becoming more open-minded towards that idea and realizing that sex work is not, um, this terrible thing that should be like, you know, looked down upon. But, um, I, I totally feel what you're saying on that. I think it's terrible that a lot of these girls, they don't, they feel like they have nowhere to go after this and they feel like they're stuck here. Um, so that's super unfortunate, but I, like I said, I really feel like our future is changing. And as the older people that have the more outdated mindset are, you know, moving on, (laughs) we're, we're getting these new people who are realizing, you know, like people are people, humans are humans. Like, um, you know, there's good people that are teachers and there's bad people that are teachers and there's good people that are important. There's bad people that are important. You know what I mean? Like they're just because your career doesn't signify everything you represent as a whole. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I think we can all think of a horrible, horrible teacher that we had. Oh my we God. would much rather swap out for like a porn star that we love. Dude, if I could have like this <laughs> Men's being my teacher or something, I'll be going to class every single day early and be staying after school to hang out with her. <laughs> like, <laughs> did you say did you say kiss of sins? Yes. She's like yeah. she, she's like she's, she would be an amazing teacher probably. But um she's like a really high energy yeah. person. But um, Yeah, she's she's wonderful. I, I love Kissa. Um I've had her on the podcast a couple of times. She has a really incredible outlook on life that I find really admirable. But yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like society treats you like you're this sexual deviant. It's almost like you become like a sex offender, you know, like a sex offender could never become a teacher for obvious reasons, but like then a porn star couldn't either. And it's like, there doesn't need to be just because like you have sex with people on camera for a living. Does it mean like you're dangerous around children? No, absolutely like it's not. Just, but it's crazy. It's so crazy. And it's like, people forget like Most of the time, a lot of the bad people on earth are the people that are in positions of power and are doing things like being a teacher, being a priest, being a school counselor, like all these things. Like those are usually the people that 
are bad, not all the time, but usually those people pick those positions because they know that they can take advantage of people doing stuff like that. So it's like, you know, it's, it sucks that we get put in the same boat as a lot of people that uh, are looked down upon, but you know, that's why you just have to be really confident and sure of yourself and who you are. That way you're not affected by other people's opinions because um, this is a terrible job if you genuinely care what a lot of people think about you. <laughs> so it's like, they are going to tell you on social media exactly what they think of you. Oh yeah, everything. They're gonna be, there's going to be people that are being the nicest to you, telling you they want to marry you. And then there's going to be people that are telling you they want you to die. And like, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's one extreme to another and you can't hold value in any of it. You just have to realize what, you think and what you believe, not what other people are telling you, whether it's good or bad. Yeah. And I I think also recognize the way that people treat you is usually a lot more reflective of themselves and how they feel about themselves. And all those trolls that come after you on social media about being a porn star are people who have serious personal sexual hangups because otherwise you're not going to spend that. Why are you going to follow a porn star? Like, consume her work and then attack her for it unless you've got some serious like s- angry sexual repression going on in your life you know Without a doubt, regular people don't fixate on the things that they hate or the things they dislike so it's like if that's if that's what you're devoting your time to you definitely have issues so yeah. um I, I never ever have let anything like that affect me like I remember when I first joined porn and I told my mom she immediately was just like what, her first question was, why are you doing that? <laughs> like literally the first word down her mouth, why are you doing that baby girl? And then she started crying and she was like, everyone's going to see you as like this nasty, dirty girl. Like no one's going to see you for who you really are. Everyone's going to think you're like, oh, she's not a whore. And I was like, I mean, I, I, I like that's because she's like, they don't know like the least how your family sees you. And I'm like, yeah, mom, duh. Like, of course they're not like, why would I, and why would I care to have them see me, how my family sees me, you know, like, this is just a job. This is just something that's made for pleasure purposes and for fun. You know, like, I'm not asking them to like analyze my whole life. And like, I don't, I don't even want that of them, you know? So it's like, I, I was like surprised she even said that because I was like, why would you think that I would care that people would see me like that? You know what I mean? Like, as long as I know who I am and my family and my friends and like, you know, people who I value their opinion know who I am, then why would I care what some guy in Indonesia thinks about me? You know what I'm saying? Like anywhere in the world, like, why would I care what they think? Like they're, they either like it or they don't. And that's not my problem. You know, like, I'm happy for the people that do respect me and uh, enjoy my work like that. I'm very thankful and uh, gracious towards them. But, you know, uh, I don't lose sleep overnight over the people that don't appreciate what I do. So your mom probably felt that it was reflective on her and how she raised you in some way, because you always get those comments like, oh, your mother must be so proud. What your parents do to you? You must have been molested when you were a kid. All the time. Yeah. And it's like my and my dad even was like my dad and my brother both said the same thing. They were like, I should have been a better brother. I should have been a better dad. And I'm like, you guys were great. I'm like, that was like, I mean, this has nothing to do with, I'm like, I'm like, they're kind of conceited to think this is like all about them. Like, I'm like, this isn't all about you. Like just me, like this has nothing to do with you at all. Actually. You know what I mean? Like I didn't choose this because I was like, dang, my brother wasn't that cool. Like my brother, it was actually my favorite brother too, that said that. So I was like, what the hell? Like you're, you're crazy. But, um, yeah, I feel like a lot of people when they hear that they or in my family when they hear that they had like this hang up that like they did something wrong and that's why I chose this, which makes me sad because like I said, that means people are looking down on this career thinking people only do it if they experience something bad. And I'm just like, no, people just do this because they really like sex and they see it's a cool way to like, you know, make a career out of it, you know? But uh, yeah, it, it was, it's been a rough uh, path with my family trying to figure it out. Actually, the funny thing is um, most people would expect like the dad to take it the hardest. And my dad was like the most accepting really about it. Like he was um, m- more so like, you know, I just want to make sure you're not like making a mistake or you're not going to regret this later on and stuff. But like, he wasn't like, kind of talking down on me about it you know what I mean like making me feel like shit he just wanted to make sure that I was safe and okay um so yeah that was interesting that my brother's my brother took it the hardest he made me really feel like crap about it he threw me through the ringer dude it was so bad um it was like when I first told him he was okay with it he was like well okay no 
that's a lie. He just wasn't okay with it. He called me and he was like, what the hell? Like you, you like, you knew I was going to find out like what happened, like what's going on. And I was like, he was, Cause you, about- you ruined his porn watching for him. Cause, now, cause now he's going to go on porn and come across his sister. <laughs> he refused to tell me like where he found out. And I was like, damn, maybe that means he saw like a video or something. Like he can be like, totally. I hope, not. I hope not. I hope that's no, all but, like, I mean, to be <laughs> fair, like almost all men, especially young men, I'm sure he watched is porn which is a perfectly yeah. natural thing to do Absolutely. so it's got to be one hell of a shock when you come across your sister yeah. <laughs> without a doubt but um i i just remember like all that happened and he was so mad at me and then like a few weeks later he's like oh can i facetime you because i'm at work with my friends and they don't believe you're my sister and i'm like what the fuck and i'm like you literally just like scolded me and like made me cry for like a week because you like told me you were so upset with me and now you're like showing me off to like your friends like what the fuck and so then like everything was fine after that and then i had like messaged him on christmas or something like a few christmases ago saying merry christmas and my number was blocked and i was like what the hell And i was like that's weird so I had messaged one of his friends, which is our mutual friend. And I was like, hey, did my brother change his number? And um, he was like, "Uh, no. And I was like, okay, well, um, you know, can you ask him if I'm blocked or something? And he was like, for sure. And uh, he real he, I guess he told me he thought I knew, but my brother was having a baby and um, the girlfriend did not want the baby to know who I was because the baby was going to be a girl. And she thought, oh, like maybe. And I'm like, first of all, <laughs> I'd like to point out the fact that the baby isn't going to know shit for a couple of years <laughs> because it's a fucking baby. Dude, exactly. That was my thoughts. Exactly. I was like, what? on earth? <laughs> He's missing out on a really cool aunt because I would have spoiled that baby. So you guys suck. You're, you're depriving that baby. But second of all, like, what the hell? Like, it's such a, a crazy way to think for me. Like, like to think that, oh, you're like, I don't want my baby to know somebody because what if they decide to do porn? Like, even if that did happen, it would have to be like 18 years down the line. Like, oh, that's so ridiculous. Like, it was really upsetting to me to think like my brother who's like family is just going to like drop me off the face of the earth because of something like that. And like, it, it was, it was really rough to go through that for sure. But, um, you know, at the same time, it's like, this is the life I chose. I can't like undo it. And I wouldn't undo it even if I could, you know? So it's like other people's reactions to my choices are, can't be mad at them for it because it's just going to cause uh, distress in my life. You know what I'm saying? If I was still mad about it to this day, I'd be depressed. But um, I kind of have let that go and realized, you know, like that's his choice. If that's what he wants to do, then I can't really um, be mad at him for it. So like, yeah, my, but fortunately I have a pretty good relationship with most of my family and uh, they haven't like disowned me or anything besides him. <laughs> but um yeah, it's I, I do feel for those people, though, that even like have no family at all or like they come into porn. Like I said earlier, they're trying to get away from their life, you know, like um, they they just want to become a whole new person. And that's why it's really porn is an easy thing to do that because you have a whole new persona. You're usually in a whole new town that you grew up in. And it's like you kind of just leave everything else behind if you're not if you don't want to be involved with that. So yeah, it's, it can be a good thing for some of those people or it can be a bad thing too, because maybe you'll end up feeling really alone. Yeah. And you're, uh, yeah, that's so true. So, um, I do feel bad for people who don't have like a solid family background or like a good friend base. that's going to support yeah. them when they get into porn, because you know, it can be a very isolating career because a lot of people judge you for what you do, like you just said. And when you go through hard times, which all of us do, you know, regardless of whether or not you work in porn, like we all have have times of distress where we really need to lean on other people. Well, and if you don't have family and you don't have like a, you know, you don't have friends that are going to support you, that's a, that's really lonely and it's really hard. Yeah. And I think that's the hardest on people in the adult industry is is the isolation due to the stigma that comes from porn. Without a doubt. I actually, early on in the industry, I had one of the girls say to me, uh, she came up to me and she was like, hey, you know, like this, this industry is very lonely. She's like, you're going to feel alone a lot of the times. So like if you ever need someone to talk to, I'm here for you. And when she said that, I appreciated it. But at the same time, it was still early on. So I was like, what is she talking about? Like lonely? Like, I don't feel lonely. Like this is, I don't understand what she's saying by this. And then the more things um, developed, the more I realized what she was saying, because like specifically even just in like romantic relationships, um, 
I never realized how hard that this career would could affect something like that. Um, mm-hmm. It does feel incredibly lonely because there's so many times where I just felt like it was going to work out with somebody and then it didn't because all of a sudden they're not okay with my career or they just decided that, you know, like it's not for them anymore. Like, which you know, teach their own. I totally understand that somebody that couldn't handle this being with someone with this career, it definitely takes a certain type of person that um, would be okay with this. So um, not that it's a bad thing. I don't think it's bad. It's just that it's, that is emotionally tolling. I'm sure for that person to be with uh, somebody in the industry, you know, like if you don't, if you, you have to look at it a certain way and realize it is just a career. It's just work. It's not personal or emotional. Um, so I, I've definitely been through some crummy experiences with relationships and the industry. Like there was one guy that I was with who, uh, he like actually really liked my job, like a little too much. Like he wanted me to like come back and tell him like all the things I did and like, uh, like talk about it during sex and stuff. And at first I was like, okay, cool. Well, I finally met somebody that like doesn't hate what I do you know what I'm saying or like I finally said it's like I thought that that was like a cool thing at first and then the more and more it went on the more I was like it felt like he more liked the idea of who I was and what I was doing than like actually me a little bit you know and I was like I was like am I being like fetishized like in a way like I was like I don't know like it's maybe not that cool he was he was a fun guy but it was just not like a it wasn't meant for a long-term thing um and then even just more recently I had had this relationship that was Great. Amazing. Um, literally nothing wrong. I, it taught me so many healthy coping skills and like uh, it breaking me out of a lot of toxic things that I used to do in the past and made me realize that's not the way to be anymore. But out of nowhere, he, he had told me early on that he wasn't sure if he was going to be fully OK with my career. He was like, you know, I, we'll, we'll take it as it goes. And I was like, OK, um, uh, out of nowhere, one morning, right after we have sex, he, he tells me that um hey, I talked to my dad last night and uh, he asked like what what you do again. Because I guess his dad had asked him previously what I'd done and he kind of gave him the ring around. And um, he said, my dad asked again. And I believe him because it was during a time when one of my videos was trending on Pornhub. So it was like on the first or second page of Pornhub, like for a couple of days. So I was like, the dad probably saw the video on Pornhub and was like, what the fuck? Wait, okay, what does she do? You know, like trying to get it out of him. And um, so he was like, he told him what I did. And the dad is like super conservative and strict and like basic. Yet, yet he was probably found you on Pornhub. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, dude, those are the people that watch porn the most, the people that go to church, the people that, you know, are so like, like very strict and conservative in their ways. They're the ones that watch it the most, in, in my opinion. But um, yeah, so he, he kind of talked him out of it and I guess made him feel like shit for being with me. Like, you know, like, this is bad. Like, are you sure you want to do this? Like, it, and And he even told him, like, I'm not allowed to, like, come over anymore because, like, he lived with his dad. And he was like, yeah, you're not, like, uh, she's not allowed to come over anymore. And I was like, what the fuck? And, like, I had met his dad so many times. And, like, I was always nice to him. So I'm like, even the fact that he knew, like, how I am as a person, that, like, he would still be like, that was so weird to me. Um, And it was more painful for me to have somebody tell me, like, oh, it's not my choice. It's not really me. It's it's someone else in my family that convinced me. Because I'm like, think for yourself, you know, like if this is something you're not okay with, then that's one thing. But it, it hurt more to hear like someone's family is like forcing them to make a different choice, you know? So yeah, I mean, it comes right back again to what we just talked about with the stigma around porn, yeah. which drives people's decisions about how they treat people in the industry. So, I mean, that's that's a perfect example of of just, for me, like the biggest problem with porn is really the way society treats people in the industry, not the industry itself. Yeah, absolutely. So. All right, guys, we're going to go to a quick commercial break and we will be right back. If you're here, it's probably because you're a fan of my podcast, Holly Randall Unfiltered. Well, that's great because I'm a fan of my podcast too. Now, if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a crowdfunding platform that allows people to make contributions on a monthly basis. Because this podcast costs money to make, maybe even more so than others. I'm obsessed with quality. So since the beginning, I have always recorded in a studio, had a professional sound engineer, and recorded professional video. All of these things cost money, as you can imagine. 
And I also made a pretty scary decision this year to cut down on my directing gigs so that I could focus more on this podcast, which is why I need your help now more than ever. But don't worry, I'm not asking you to give me something for nothing. In exchange for your contributions, I offer so many perks. For example, access to the live streams of all of my interviews, a bonus podcast that I do called My LA Porn Life, Q and A's where the stars answer your specific questions, behind the scenes interviews, merchandise such as mugs, shirts, and stickers, access to my private Snapchat, and so much more. You can join for as little as $5 a month and help me change the way the world sees the adult industry and sex work. So take a look around and see everything that I have to offer. I really hope that you'll join and be a part of our little community. Okay, so we're back. Now, before you came on, I asked my Patreon members as well as people on Twitter if people had questions for you. Mm -hmm. And one question that came up a couple of times was about some incident from the Howard Stern show, which I don't know anything about (laughs) because I don't listen to his show. So... Can you explain Um, to me what the hell people are talking about? Yeah, so I had had a friend, a mutual friend who I guess was close with the people in the Howard Stern show, and one day he he approached me and was like, hey, they're looking for a girl to go on a date with one of the guys that works at the show, and they want to, like, record it and, um, like, just have it be a feature on one of his episodes. And I was like, yeah, for sure. I'm down. Like, that sounds fun. And he was like, yeah, he's like a really nice guy. Like, you're going to just have like a cool time. Like, it's just, it's just like, they just want to hear you guys talking about whatever. And I'm like, for sure. So I go and, um, it, it, it was well, definitely different than what I thought it was going to be. They made it seem like it was just going to be like a regular date, you know, like, and to just monitor the talking situation and um little did i know they they go they bring me up to the hotel room mic me up and they're like okay so um you know if you and him end up having sex can we like have a microphone in the room and record like all your guys having sex and stuff and like play it on the radio and i was like first of all we're not having sex <laughs> i was like second of all even if we were no like what the fuck like you guys are gonna pay me like what the hell like no way absolutely not and so, because they just assume because you're a porn star, you're yeah, going to fuck everybody exactly. that you come across. I, I felt like that's what it was. I was like, yeah. you guys like, automatically, like, for one of the first things. like. And then once I was kind of like, know about that idea, they were like, I felt like they were like really depleted. I felt like they were like, that was the whole point of this thing was to like hear the sex and like, yeah. And like, and I didn't know that at all. Like I said, my friend had just brought, approached me as if it was like a regular just date and they just wanted to hear like talking and stuff. And so uh, at that point, I could tell they were like, oh, damn, like, we don't really know if this is going to, like, make it on the show anymore or anything because of that. And I was like, okay, well, I mean, whatever. Like, I don't know what to say to you guys. Like, I didn't know that this is what I was getting into. Otherwise, maybe I wouldn't have come, you know. Um, So we go on the date and uh, he I didn't know he also had like a wife and that it was like some kind of like, uh, like open relationship thing like some like three-way type of situation thing I don't know dude maybe I didn't do enough research on him first I should have like looked up more about this guy and like realized what was going on here but um he wasn't mean or anything it was just like a weird situation and uh, at the end of the night he was like yeah well do you want to like go to the room whatever I was like no <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah so I thought it wasn't even gonna make it on the air I didn't even know like when it was on I just knew like all of a sudden people were messaging me and stuff like oh like uh like you went on a date with Brent or whatever and I was like oh wow okay so they must have aired it but um yeah I guess that had been a thing like one of the main things with the whole show was that they had put him on a couple dates with girls and he was never able to like close the deal and have sex so like I was supposed to be like the one where it like all went down and I was like man you're so right they they expected me to do it I think because of my career were the other girls that he went on a date with were they porn stars or were they no I don't even know who they were but um I don't under my so they were like okay we're gonna put her with a porn star she'll definitely sleep with him because we all know that porn stars will fuck anybody (laughs) fuck anybody because they're porn stars yeah and then they maybe like it was so funny too because like when they first bring us to the room like I literally like um just in passing we like had the meeting at like the 
lunch the bar place in the hotel and so like they bring me up to the room to get mic'd up though and like I had only seen the guy Brett for like a split second he was like oh hi and I'm like hi and I go up and they're like and do a little pre-interview with me and they're like oh so what did you think of Brent blah blah and I'm like thinking in my head like I literally said just hide him I was like uh they're like what was your first impression on him I was like um he's bald and they were like they were all laughing at me because I was like well what do you want me to say like oh he's really nice he seems super cool like I literally just saw him like for a second like I don't have an impression on him like I'm not gonna say her and lie to you guys but um yeah I felt like they kind of were a little disappointed with the way that worked out but I mean I'm not I wasn't gonna be pressured in having sex with some dude that I didn't want to have sex with just to make them have a good episode you know but um yeah, I think there's sometimes bigger shows like that have that sense of entitlement, you know. I think Howard Stern used to have that kind of pull, but I don't really think so anymore. Yeah, and I guess that if I had had sex with him, they would have, like, had me on the show to come back and talk with Howard about, like, how he was in bed and stuff. So I think they kind of wanted to use, like, that as an incentive to make me do it, too. And I was like, no, like, I don't care that much. Like, I really don't, like, care to do that. And I was just like, it's just, it was just like, awkward it was so awkward I was like yeah I'm not gonna be doing something like that again <laughs> yeah it would have been nice if they'd kind of like filled you in yeah, I would have about or or approached like your agent or any agent been like hey we're looking for a girl to do this seat scenario we but also too like I mean and that you know and and, and as a sex worker you know I know that you guys are, are very careful about who you sleep with outside of work. So like, was this guy tested? Probably not. Right. I mean, you're definitely have to use a condom then. It's just like, yeah. The funny thing is there was a, there was, they wanted to have me come back like the next day and do it still. He even texted me. He was like, Hey, would you be willing to come back another day and like do it? And I was like, no, but he had the guy who had like mic'd me up was really cute. And I was like, no, but I'll come back and have sex with him and you guys can record it. <laughs> I was like no sorry like I has a girlfriend I was like okay then no like I'm not coming back <laughs> oh my god that's funny you're gonna ditch him for the sound guy yeah, I was I would have fucked the sound guy but <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so um what uh what is one of the things about the adult industry that you would change if you could Ooh. um you know, one of the touchy things, I was going to ask you this question earlier of like whether or not you think girls should, if it's okay for them to be 18 or if we should change the age to like 21 or something. Um, that my, comes up a lot. Yeah. My personal opinion, I started when I was 20. So, but my, my personal opinion is that I, I think it would be smarter for it to be at 21. Um, I know there's a lot of girls who are 18 and who are very mature and they are totally capable of doing this job at 18 years old. But I think that- And there's some women that are 35 that should be doing exactly, this job. No, exactly. It goes both ways. Yeah. But, um, I think it would be fair to say that there's more who are 18 who choose this and regret it than there are who are 18 and choose this and end up doing really well. Um, yeah, just because you make dumb fucking decisions when you're 18. I, so many things I was I did. such an idiot when I was 18. Yeah, absolutely. There's so many things I did 17, 18, 19 that I would never do now. Like there's things I did like a year ago that I would never do now. You know what I mean? So it's just like, it, it's always changing. But um, I think it, that's something I would change if I had the opportunity to do it. I would make the age be 21. Um, I mean, a lot of people will probably be mad at me for that because there's a lot of people who love watching porn where the girls just turn 18 and stuff like that, you know? And there, like I said, there's a lot of girls who have been really successful, but it's just, I don't think the risk is worth it really, because like I said, there's just too many bad choices to be made at that age. And you're not really sure of who you are yourself yet. And maybe you think that's something you want and you may just realize later on it's not. Um, so that would be one of the things I would change. Uh, what else would I change? I wish more girls were informed when they came in the industry, like knowing like you don't have to have sex with a director. You don't have to like um, appease people you don't want to appease and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like I wish more, I wish there was some, some kind of more like educational system instilled on these girls when they come in, instead of them just being so blind and being leaded by the blind being leaded by the blind, basically You're like, you know, just them people, people who are telling them these things and then them, probably because they're 18 believing it you know 
So I was, I was just going to say, I feel like maturity plays into that a lot and like yeah. lack of boundaries because learning how to set boundaries is something that is, is hard for a lot of people. And it's something that you learn with maturity. So I think that a, a lack of maturity also helps play into that. The yeah. idea that, that you're, you don't have like the kind of validity where you can say, put your foot down and say like, I'm not going to do this because that's my choice and you can't convince me otherwise. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. I, that- I, I do agree though. I think, um, I actually want to do, I was thinking about this, of course, I, I always have a million projects, but I want to do like a getting into porn, like online series okay. and talk and, and talk, you know, about, I mean, we talk about it so much in this podcast, but it's usually scattered between interviews, <laughs> but to have like one really concise kind of like, you want to get into porn, like these are all the things you should know. These are all the things you should think about. These are all the steps that you should take. Um, you know, just so that people can make informed decisions. Yeah, a proper so. introduction would be really helpful to a lot of girls. Um, mm-hmm. I know Spiegler tells me all the time there's so many girls who could have went really far, but they just made the wrong choices in their career or they let other people make their choices for them and they suffered because of that. So, um, yeah, it would be really helpful to a lot of girls, I think, to have a little more info going into this instead of just thinking like, oh, I'm just me having sex on camera and making money, like, it's a little more complicated than that. There's a lot of, it's a little more stuff that goes into it, but, um, yeah. I mean, along those, along those same lines, what advice would you give to somebody new who is thinking about getting into the industry? What would you tell them? Um, One, to be really confident and sure of yourself before you go into this, because like I said, I feel like a lot of people go into this looking for validity or like acceptance or like wanting people to want them. So I would I would say to these girls, make sure you're really confident in yourself and who you are and don't hold the opinions of others so close to you. Um, also, um, I mean, in my personal opinion, is like stay single. <laughs> Because, unless the guy's super, super cool, because in my experience, it's just brought me more trouble and heartache than it did positivity, you know? So, like, unless you're really sure that person's the good person for you, it's it's probably a better idea to just kind of focus on yourself and your career for the time being. Um, uh, also, obviously, save your money. Uh, that's a huge one, you know? <laughs> like, don't blow it on, because a lot of these people, they never had money before, so they just want to blow it on everything, you know, go buy the Gucci bag that you always wanted and all these kinds of things, which, you know, that can be fun, but it's a lot more fun to have something better to show for your money later on down the line instead of a purse or a pair of shoes. So and also, too, it's it's foolish to think that everything's going to stay exactly the same all the time. Exactly. I mean, when you first get in the industry, you're going to get booked a lot, but that may not necessarily continue because you're new. And even especially now with this whole like trend with the OnlyFans and stuff like that, you know, girls are making a ton of money, which is great. But like, I personally, I never rely on a stream of income staying the same ever. So I would take a lot of that money. I'm put, you know, cause I have an OnlyFans too. I I take that money and I put it aside and I'm paying off my debt and I'm like saving for a house. Like, you know what I mean? Because Absolutely. the one constant thing about life is that it fucking changes all the time. <laughs> yeah, it goes, it goes, it keeps on going. That's the truth. But um, yeah, I, those are the things that I would say. I can't think of anything right off top. I mean, I'm sure if I really put more thought into it, there would be like a whole guidebook that I'd be able to write. But <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I, I really feel like mental health is a big thing too. Oh, don't get on drugs. That's a big thing that I would uh, recommend to most girls because I feel like they get into here in LA and they live this like fast paced lifestyle, partying and doing all these things with all these girls that they never knew before. And then all of them are doing all these crazy things too. So they want to do it. And I, that's how a lot of girls I feel also get caught up because then guess what? If you're partying all the time, you're probably not going to show up to set and then people aren't going to book you. And then like, you know what I mean? Like also your mental health is going to deteriorate. Like you can't, um, you can't be an addict and, uh, maintain a healthy outlook and, um, career at the same time. It's not, it's not really possible. And I, I have seen girls who, I know we're good girls and they let the drugs take over them. And it's like, they're demons at that point. It's like some, it's not, they're not demons, but they have demons that take over them. And I feel really, it makes me sad and it makes me hurt because I don't like to see people change from who they originally were. 
Um, but yeah, I know drug drugs and alcohol. I, I can speak from personal experience will definitely change you and will make you unrecognizable to your friends, your family, and most of all yourself. I mean, when I was, you know, deep in my alcoholism, there was shit that I would do that I couldn't believe I was doing it, even at the time, you know what I mean? And it would be like this, this argument in my brain where there was this one side I just couldn't control that was like driving to the liquor store. And there was another part of my brain that was like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It was, it was weird. It was very weird. Addiction is a straight, it's a strange, dark beast on your back, man. And it is fucking hard to get off your back. Yeah. There's a lot of work. And exactly. And like, and if you don't necessarily have the friends or family there for you, I'm sure it's even harder, you know, like you, you need somebody there to kind of, uh, help you out of that hole. So totally. Like- I was so lucky to have the support of my friends and my family and like, who, I don't know. I don't know how I could have gotten sober without them, you know? Yeah. Without a doubt. Um, it, that's an, so that's, I think another really big thing is just don't let the drugs and the partying take over and don't lose track of who you were before this or who you want to become in a good positive way, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, what, uh, what motivates you to get out of bed in the morning? Oh my gosh. (laughs) That's such a tough one. Oh my goodness. Um, You know, when, if if it's work related to, if it's work related, I guess it's like, if I have something really exciting going on for that scene, like that would be a big thing. Like, Oh, I can't wait to go fuck this person and put on like a great performance. And I know a bunch of people are going to be watching it. That's really exciting for me. So that's a good thing. Um, Otherwise, I mean, like, if we're being really, like, realistic here, usually the thing is, like, my cat stepping on my face, meowing on me, and telling me they want to get fed, that motivates me to get out of bed. <laughs> but, Fair enough. No, but in a, in a more, like, um, in a better sense, I would say, like, you know, having goals to accomplish that day helps me want to get out of bed. If I have plans, like, oh, I'm going to go roller skating today, and I'm going to go see my friend in Long Beach, and I'm going to do, like, these exciting things, that's very motivational, Um there are days where I don't want to get out of bed because I don't necessarily have plans or anything. And it is hard to like, you know, force yourself to get up and do something on your own. Like, you know, like maybe yoga or meditate or watch a few of your favorite shows or cook a new recipe, you know, stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, I I like to sleep in a lot though. If I'm being honest, I'm one of those people that could sleep like 13 hours if given the opportunity. So (laughs) it's pretty bad. (laughs) Well, yeah, but I mean, you get out of bed when you have to get out of bed. And the great thing about working in the industry that you do is that you, you pr- I mean, obviously you have set days, but you don't work a regular nine to five. Yeah, no, that's super nice. That's so great. you get to have those days where you can sleep 13 hours because some days you're going to be on set for Wicked Pictures, shooting a movie with Holly Randall, and you're going to be on set for like 18 hours. So The funny thing is sometimes those 18 hour days go by so quickly as long as you're constantly moving around and doing yeah I've noticed there's been days on set where it wasn't even that long maybe it was like six six hours or something but it felt like it was going by forever because the people just did not have a grasp on how to efficiently do things and you just feel like you're just sitting waiting around and it's so frustrating because it's like well we could be doing this right now we could be doing this should be, be going way more smoothly so it's like I don't even have problems with those long days as long as it's like people are efficient yeah I hear a lot of these stories about people like yeah who just don't know what they're doing and they don't you know they don't have like a schedule or a plan and a lot of shit is just time is wasted I am very much like a fucking schedule yeah you are you are yeah um so actually along those lines what is like as a performer because i could give you like a thousand things that irritate the fucking shit about (laughs) shit out of me about like working with other people like what performers do to irritate the hell out of me but what um what is it like what are some things that directors do that Um, make you crazy i could think of the exact thing that really made me upset one day was um this one director they had like the scene we were doing sex and they had the scene all set up in one room and then they were like okay we want to change the sex halfway in and do the scene in another room and i was like okay that's fine i guess like that like to just 
it's just the same scene, but it's just like the sex is split up into two rooms. I'm like, okay, whatever you guys want. But then like they didn't have that other room set up already. So me and this guy had sex. The connection's good. The energy's good. Everything's going amazing. And then all of a sudden they're like, okay, cut. Now we have to go set up this whole room. And they were like fucking around, dude. Like they, they took so long to set up the room. They couldn't figure out how to do it because there was like mirrors and reflections all over the room. And like the lighting wasn't right. And like, it, I was just like, I felt bad because the guy like has to maintain his boner this whole time. You know what I mean? And like, he's getting frustrated because like, we're just sitting here like, it was a long time. I'm not joking. It was like at least like 30 minutes waiting there, just waiting for someone to like figure out what they're doing. And I'm like, you guys probably should have had that room like set up already because like, I understand like 30 minutes doesn't sound like a long time, but like to somebody who is trying to keep the energy. Keep a boner. <laughs> it's that, a long like, time. I felt really bad for the guy. Like it wasn't even me so much, but more so him. Like, I'm like, how are we going to be able to continue making this good? You know what I mean? Like if he's struggling the whole time. So, um, yeah, that was extremely frustrating, and they were just, like, wanting to, like, fuck around, and, like, that was... A- Shooting in rooms with mirrors is <laughs> such a fucking nightmare, and and it's funny, because if you get it right, it looks great. Uh-huh. So I actually love... I love to... Utilize, my crew likes to make fun of me, because they know I love reflective surfaces, <laughs> and I love to, like, work with mirrors and stuff like that, but, like, it is a fucking bitch. Yeah. And you definitely, if you're, especially if you're moving into a reflective room yeah. in the middle of a scene, you need to know your angles and you need to know exactly where you're going to be for that sure. because otherwise you're going to be fucking around for a long period of time. Yeah. And then like even his crew was getting upset because they're like frustrated about how to set up the room. So like the whole energy went down. Like not only is the Mm -hmm. performer getting upset, but then like all the crew is getting upset and frustrated. And it's just like, what are we doing? Like if it was this bad, we probably should have just shot it all in one room. Like it wasn't that crazy of a scene where it was like necessarily needed to be shot in two rooms. You know what I mean? Like it could have been just in one room and an an awesome scene. So that was really frustrating. Um, I, I, the other thing I would say about directors, it's not all of them, but some of them like uh, early on definitely do take advantage of the girls. Like luckily being with Spiegler, I didn't experience that often. I only experienced it one time really where I felt like a guy was being a little weird. Um, but that, Were you trying to get you to sleep with him? Yeah. Yeah. Like he, he had given me a ride home from set one day because I needed a ride and he had lived in the area that I lived at, at the time. And so he was like, Oh, I'll give you a ride home. And I'm like, okay. And then like, I kind of didn't really like, I, it was like my one it was when I just started so I like didn't really know like how to be and how to act and stuff and like I I had given him my number but that was a mistake like I shouldn't have done that and then I realized that he had a wife which I didn't also know I didn't know he had a wife I found that out later on and then I was like yeah so look I never had sex with him or anything luckily but I feel like I don't get booked by that director because I didn't have sex with him you know what I'm saying Mm -hmm. like not anymore I don't get booked with him uh because of that does so, he direct for like big companies? Um, I he does, but I'm not sure if he does anymore. <laughs> I, think I, know, I think I know who you're talking. About. Yeah, I'm not sure if he does. If it's the person I think you're talking about, he was let go. Yeah, because of that specifically. Really? Yeah, yeah. I believe it. I definitely believe it. Yeah. But um, yeah, that not was the first girl that told me that story. <laughs> and I, like I said, luckily that's only the only time I really experienced that because like. You know, like, I feel like I said, being with Spiegler, people know not to fuck around with us because we'll tell him and he's going to have some head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but unfortunately, a lot of these other girls, they don't have any idea and they think like, oh, well, if I do this, like, he'll give me more bookings and like this, this and that. And it's like, chances are you probably really won't even get more bookings. You know what I mean? Like, you're not even, it wouldn't even be beneficial because what, you're just probably going to keep having sex with him forever or like. Well, here's the thing too, that a lot of girls don't realize. And if it is who I think it is, and he works for the brands that I think he works for, um, he doesn't get to make those calls. (laughs) So I'll tell you right now, the brand picks who they want. Now you can recommend people or you can say, or or you could actually say like, I won't work. There's a couple of people on my no list that, um, you know, like Twisty's nose, like not to book me to shoot. But like, there's yeah. literally like two people that I won't shoot. And one of them, I think like I've changed my mind about because she's been cool recently. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, yeah, otherwise, like I don't, they don't ask me who I want. Yeah. They're just like, this is who we want you to shoot. And yeah. that's who I shoot. Like, I don't get to choose. For sure. So, you know, I think a lot of times these directors make these girls think like, 
you know, oh, I, you know, and it depends on the director. Like I know, like, you know, Mike Quasar is shooting for zero tolerance. Like he really gets to pick like whoever pretty much he wants. Yeah. Like those things they want every once in a while, but he gets a lot of say, but like, if you're shooting for Gamma or you're shooting for Mind Geek, like they, they, they make those choices. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Without a doubt. So that's another thing that maybe more girls need to be informed on that. That's not how it works, you know, because if yeah. you don't know, then then how could you make those choices? But yeah, it, it's luckily I haven't had too many bad experiences with directors in all honesty. Um, I don't like when directors also are too like um, trying to like micromanage the scene, like been a very crazy way like okay come 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 like okay moan say you want him to fuck you say you want him like telling me like exactly what to say and exactly when to say it and exactly like, i understand saying like okay you're gonna build up to an orgasm in about five minutes like i totally get that that's normal but don't be sitting there screaming at me and telling me like i'm like how the fuck do they even edit this out of post like how, like this person's talking the whole time like how do they get rid of their voice <laughs> and it's like but and i'm like and it, and it unless i feel like you don't even need someone telling you that unless you're like a terrible performer and you can't hold your own at all you know what I'm saying but some directors are just so like immersed in it and they're just want to be mitigating every single it's almost like they want to make themselves a part of the scene yeah and I'm just like what the hell like it's it's weird it's weird when directors I can only think of like two off the top of my head that are a little too um I don't know the word for it but a little too much when it comes to yeah but like I said, besides that. Well, actually, so along those lines, let's let's spin it to saying a little more positive. <laughs> Who are some of your favorite people to work for? And you don't have to say me <laughs> just because I'm here. Let's just get that out of the way. Let's assume that I'm one of the people yes. that you're going to say is your favorite. Because if you don't name me, it's awkward. So let's, <laughs> no, so let's just put that, that aside. No, besides yeah. me. I already know. Who do you love? Who do you like to work with? There's this one director. His name is Tony Profane. And uh, he was my, he shot my first like seven scenes actually, because Speaker wanted me to go, he, he works for porn pros and uh, he wanted me to go on like a very relaxed set and not something too crazy for my first couple scenes, because then he was like scared. I would get like too overwhelmed and quit. So he was like, I'm going to give you somebody who it's just going to be like you, the director and the talent there basically. And it's just going to be super easy and you're not going to feel like overwhelmed. Um, so I, I worked with him for like the first seven scenes and I felt like he was kind of like my porn uncle or something because he was like so nice and so sweet. Like even on the, after the second day, I brought him like gifts. I got him like cologne and stuff. Cause I was like, you're so nice. Like I'm so appreciative that like I was able to work with you. You bought me a necklace. Remember? I oh, still have that. Yes. Oh yes. Yeah. I did, you found that little bat. I remember you found the bat and I thought that that reminded mm -hmm. me of you. Yeah. You're a little, you're a little gift giver, which is really sweet. <laughs> thank you but um yeah I, I i definitely he was he's one of my favorites to work with without a doubt he's just a genuinely nice down-to-earth person not weird or creepy at all um who else is a good director um derek for vixen is a really or like the vixen brand in general he's really awesome he's a super cool guy to work for um also just very lax set because like you know vixen sets are longer so it can feel more like okay like this is a lot but he makes the days feel really comfortable and good and i'm i'm appreciative for him for sure you need somebody who's understanding and comfortable to be around when the days are long like that you know um mm -hmm. but uh as far as talent goes um I really like Lucas Frost. You actually had me work with him one time for a scene and he's a, just another genuinely nice person. Like, yeah, he's great. Yeah. I don't like people that like put up like fronts or, or like kind of like, you don't feel like you really know who they are because mm -hmm. they're just like this persona or whatever. <laughs> and it's like, I don't get that vibe from him. Like he just is who he is. And like, I really respect that a lot. Um, man, I'm trying to think. I always had like a really big crush on Vicky Chase. So when I got to work with her for the first time, I was like super stoked because I think she's like so genuinely beautiful. <laughs> and, like, I bet you guys looked great together. Yeah, that was that was a really awesome. I got to work with her twice because for the first time it was um, for like a threesome. And then when I got my Cherry Pimps Cherry of the Month, they asked me who I wanted to work with and she was on my list. And so they put me with her and I was super excited because I was like, yay, now I get her like all to myself. So it was even like kind of better than when I had to share her with a guy. <laughs> but um yeah she's just like genuinely beautiful and also another nice person you know not not creepy or weird or anything or mean she's cool 
Um, I really love Gina Valentina. She's a great person. Uh, I don't think she's not in the industry anymore, but um, she's another person who just has a very good heart. She was actually the person that told me, you know, like this industry can be kind of lonely. And if you ever need somebody, I'm here for you. And it's like, that's really sweet. Yeah, she it was so sweet of her. And she's just such a good heart and soul. She's a very pure person. But um, yeah, that's I, I'm very thankful for some of the people I've met in the industry, honestly. Not that I really hang out with many people outside of the industry, but I know that um, it's good to see that there is good. You know, like I said, it's not it's not about these crazy people who are like all self-absorbed and stuff. There's people that are just here to enjoy their work and just have fun. So, you know, I have to say like, cause I've worked with, you know, a lot of different people. I've worked with mainstream people as well as obviously mostly people in the adult industry. And there's something that's like almost more genuine about people in porn than there is about people who work in mainstream. I think that there's something about the fact that you guys are so like open sexually and like you put yourself in such a vulnerable position by being like completely naked, open to the world. Uh I don't know. There's something like, there's some kind of raw honesty that comes with that, that I think like translates into your personalities. And I have found that like for me, honestly, in terms of all the different kinds of people I've I've worked with and I've shot, like I love working with porn stars and and so many people that, um, you know, have never worked on a porn set before, um, have said the same thing. Yeah. Like they're like these are such cool, down to earth, <laughs> chill, honest, funny, like people. For sure. You know, there's like there's like a a lack of pretense that you find sometimes in 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 other like actors and actresses or models in in the mainstream market. So yeah, I don't know what it is. I could see that because like, even like, sorry, the people above me are like fucking having a party right now. I'm sorry if you guys. Yeah, I was like, what is going on? I I don't know what is going on. I'm sorry. It's like 3.15 in the afternoon. Who the fuck is having a rave right now? I'm not kidding. I was like, of course this is happening right now. I'm sorry. It's, it's but, um, yeah, no, I, I could see that actually because like I, you know, being in this industry, you, you, like you said, you're putting yourself in a very vulnerable position where people are seeing you for everything that they see. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like you, you, you can't really put that much of a front if you want to like enjoy your experience doing it, you know, like you just have to be you and just be true to yourself and complete and whole. But like, it's at the same time, it's, um, I I do meet people though, that I'm just like, you're a little weird. Like you're a little, like you got a little too wrapped up in whatever this is. And now you kind of think you're something you're not, but, um, it, it goes like going back to like how you said mainstream, like I do meet like, celebrities sometimes and like they're never how you expect them to be like usually they're really freaking like arrogant or like weird or like you're just like oh wow like I wonder if they were like that before they were a celebrity or if this like they got morphed into this because of the lifestyle they're living or something because it's like it's pretty bizarre to see that but yeah I, I I completely get what you're saying when you say maybe porn stars are a little bit more down to earth than most career paths because yeah, we just, you kind of have to not give a fuck. Like I said, if you choose this job, so it's like, (laughs) it's very, very true. (laughs) Well, thank you so much, so much, Eliza. This was such a pleasure. It was so nice to sit down and talk to you. Um, If you don't mind hanging out for like another 10 minutes or so, I have a couple of questions um, that I want to do exclusively for my Patreon members Absolutely, I'd love to. for like a bonus Q and a segment that I do. So awesome. And next time I see you, once all this is over, I have a little gift for the baby too, that I'm going to give you. So. <laughs> um, can you tell everybody where they can find you online, plug anything you want to plug websites, whatever. Um, so, uh, first things first, like only fans for sure. <laughs> you can follow me on my only fans, only slash Eliza Ibarra, E L I Z A I B A R R A. You can find me on Instagram at Eliza 22 Ibarra underscore and Twitter and Snapchat at Eliza 22 Ibarra. So that's that. <laughs> 
<laughs> and you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Twitter and on Instagram. Of course, to support this podcast, as always, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered, where you'll be able to watch this exclusive Q&A that Eliza and I are going to do right now. Mm -hmm. Also, too, if you want to rate this podcast, which really helps me get up in the charts, go to ratethispodcast.com slash HRU, and it will automatically detect the uh, podcast platforms that work for whatever device you're on and will direct you there to leave me a rating and a review, which would be so appreciated. Um, thank you all for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>